Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Oh, it's such a wonderful day. Good morning. If you are joining me for the very first time, my name is Dahlia, and I have been sharing the wonderful word of God with you on this platform. On this channel, I post on Mondays, where Mondays we are going through the book of John, and on Fridays, I post It's Prayer Time Friday. Oh, if you have not joined me in Prayer Time Friday, join me. I am sharing on how to fast. It is a wonderful series. And I'm telling you, it will clarify lots of things and answer questions for you. If you're looking for God to answer, answer your prayers. If you're looking for a breakthrough from God, I dare you to watch the How to Fast series and watch the How to Pray series because you don't need to go to anybody for prayer and answer. God will answer you if you come. He said it in his word. So join me. You're going to learn so much from the How to Fast series and the How to Pray series. And that's on Fridays. Every Fridays, I post How to Pray or It's Prayer Time Friday. But this season, we are in How to Fast series. Oh, it's exciting. But on Mondays, we are in the wonderful book of John. Oh, my goodness. This is such a wonderful book. And in case you're wondering, I say that about every book. Aha. Uh -huh. Wonderful. And we are in the book of John and we're in chapter 14, which is a very pivotal chapter. It's a foundational uh, chapter in the words of Bishop Noel Jones. It's a substratum of the book of John. This is the chapter of chapters. And you want to know this chapter. You want to study this chapter even more because I'm just over giving you like an overview. But when you go back and you study this chapter, put it in your heart and you'll see, oh, it's amazing because there's there's lots of teachings and comfort in it. And you'll know as a believer what God has done for you. You'll know as a believer your right, your protection. I'm telling you, get into this chapter. So we are in chapter 14. And the last time we spoke, let's take a look. The last time we spoke, we talked about um, the comforter. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. And it, we said the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not an it. It's not a thing. It's not a feeling. You know how some people say, oh, I, it's a feeling. No, it's a person. It's the person of Jesus Christ. But, you know, we get so spooky and we kind of like put things on things where it's not to be. When you study the word, you'll understand. Remember, God is a spirit. God is everywhere. God is spirit. I'm sorry, not a spirit, but God is spirit. And so when Jesus said, I'm going to go away, if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. And he says, I have to go away so that he can come. And when you read through it, he says, because I am in you and I'm him, I'm come, I'm going to come to you. Oh, you're not alone, beloved. You're not alone. If you're born again, you might not have a physical person, but you are never alone because he's with you and he's in you. Oh my goodness. Read this chapter, go back and study it. And so he talked about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit as a comforter or parakletos in the Greek as one that is called alongside of you as an advocate. You see that? So when he talks about the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, it's like an advocate, someone who advocates for you. It's like someone who is alongside of you, parakletos. It's alongside of you, shoulder to shoulder. So he's with you. You're not alone. So whatever you're going through today, you're not alone. God is with you. You just have to pray and listen to the Holy Ghost. Ask him to guide you because he's the spirit of truth. Jesus talked about that in the last lesson. He said, the spirit of truth, the world can't see him. And the world will not receive him because they don't know him. But you, you know him. That's what Jesus said. We know him. You know him through his word. You know him when you accept Christ in your heart. You know him when you pray. That's how you know him. You know why many Christians don't 
know the Holy Spirit and the way of the Spirit? It's because they don't spend time with God. They don't spend time in the Word. They don't go to Bible study. They don't go to prayer meeting. Some of them just go to church on Sunday and then they dust off their Bible the, the next Saturday to go the following Sunday. They don't pick up their Bible till the following Sunday and they dust it off Saturday night. That's not how a Christian's supposed to live. You're supposed to get to know him through prayer and study of the word. And Jesus said when he was teaching them, he says, I am not going to leave you comfortless. I am going to send you another, another what of the same kind, the comforter, and he will abide with you. He's going to be with you forever. So you're not alone. And he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The, them sinner people, them ungodly people, they, they're not going to see the spirit of the Lord. They can't and they can't receive him because they don't know him. But you do. And he'll be with you. And he is with you. We're going to pick up now at verse 22. That was last week's lesson. I'm giving you a quick little summary, but go back and watch that module. So now we're picking up at verse 22 and Jesus is continuing to speak. And so while he was telling them, I'm not going to leave you comfortless and all of this. And he said, let yet a little while you, you won't see me. You know, he says, you won't see me. Um, because I have to go away and all these things. And so verse 22, now Judas, he's talking about, you know, if you keep your commandments, if you keep his commandments, then you are his disciples. And if you keep his commandment, that shows that you love him, right? So Judas says to him, now, this is not the Judas that deceived him. Because in the Bible, sometimes they have, you know, the same names because in that culture, they would pass down the names from generation to generation. So you'll have the grandfather, the father, the son, the son's son, and so forth. And they would tend to pass down the names. So this is another Judas, not the Judas who deceived the Lord. And he asked him a question and he says, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us, right? Listen, and not to the world. That's a brilliant question. He's saying, you're going to show, because remember in the above verse, he says, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because they don't know him, but you know him, right? And so he says, but how are you going to show yourself to us and not to them? And Jesus answered. So let's pay attention. It's a great question. So let's pay attention to what Jesus says. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man loves me, ah, first order of business. If a man loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And my father will come to him and make his abode with him. So Jesus answers and says, he says, why don't you manifest to the world? He says, well, if a man loves me and keeps my word, he says, we, listen, he said, and keep my word. He says, my father will love him and we will come to him and live with him. Glory to God. So he's saying, if the person loves him and keeps his word, him and the father will come and live. He'll be that paracletos. He'll come and be that advocate alongside of you. He says, he that loves me not keeps not my saying or he that he that doesn't love me doesn't keep my word and he doesn't keep what I'm teaching. And if he doesn't keep what I'm teaching and he doesn't hear what I'm teaching, then the father will have nothing to do with him. Because when he doesn't hear what I'm saying, then he's not hearing the father. Some people want to say that they believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus or they don't believe Jesus is the way. And they, they, they bring in all these other things, variables in terms of God or whatever, right? But he's saying, if you don't hear me, Jesus, if you don't receive what I'm saying, Jesus, me, then 
you're not hearing the father because the father is in me and I'm in the father. So if you don't believe me, then you're not believing the one who sent me. So when people talk about, I believe in God, but I don't believe Jesus. Jesus is a prophet. Some religions say Jesus was a good man. Jesus is a prophet. Jesus wasn't God. Jesus wasn't the savior. Jesus wasn't the Messiah. So then God is not listening to those people. They're, as far as God is concerned, they're heathens. He's not hearing nothing that comes out of their mouth. He's not hearing the words that are coming out of their mouth. When they um, minimize and diminish Jesus as Lord, God has nothing to do with those other religions who don't accept Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Watch what he says. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So this is the other thing I want to tell you. So the Holy Spirit goes by Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, comforter, spirit of truth. So, but it's, it's all the same. And all of that just tells you what he does for you. He's the spirit of truth. So you want to know something? You want to know the truth? You want to know about you? You want to know what's on the inside? He'll tell you the truth. Ah, Come on, people. All you got to do is ask the Lord. He'll tell you. You don't have to ask anybody. Verse 26, he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you, teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I say, say it unto you. Mighty God. Mm, 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 mm. This is why it's important to study the word. The Bible said, study to show yourself approved. You have to study, not approved by men, but approved by God. You don't study to be seen and approved by men. You study unto God. And he says, the Holy Ghost, the Father, he's a comforter. And he's called all these things because these are all things that he does. He says, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, he's going to come in my name. And he's going to teach you all things. Well, how is he going to teach you if you're not listening? How is he going to teach you if you're not spending time with him? How is he teaching you if you're not praying and seeking the Lord? He said, I'll teach you and I'll bring things back to your remembrance. And then let's continue. And then I'll talk about it a little bit more. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not like the world gives, but I give my peace unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he's telling them that he's going away. And he says, listen, I don't want you to be afraid because he's going back to where he started in the first verse of this chapter, where he says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, you believe in me. And then he tells them I'm going away. Now he's saying, I'm leaving you peace. Mm. Not like the world peace out there. My peace I'm going to give to you. Mm. My God, I want to shout. Let's get into this. So he says, when Judas asked this question, let's go through this a little bit. When Judas asked the question, Jesus answers. And the answer might seem simple, but you've got to go back, read it again, meditate on it. And you've got to read the whole chapter to bring it together. But when he asked him the question, he asked him a really good question. And Jesus says, this is how you distinguish. This is how you distinguish and you separate. Because he says, why won't you show yourself to the world? And he says, listen. If they love me, if any man loves me and keeps my word, then yes, he'll be loved of the father. That's when I will come and live in that man or woman. When they love me and keep, don't minimize the word of God. He says, <clears throat> and keep my words. So, when you see these people and these mega, mega people and they're sinning, oh God, I didn't write it. I didn't write it. Somebody says, why are you always talking about mega churches and, and this and that? I didn't write it, sister. I didn't write it. He says, if you love me, one, two, if you keep my commandments. So you got to love him and you got to keep his word. You can't keep sinning and sinning and sinning and thinking that God is going to bless you. Oh, it's goodness. 
love and kindness. You know, they have this fluff and full church. Oh, Jesus is love. He loves everybody. He sure do. He loves the world. But then there are those who belong to him that he lives in, that he makes an abode in, that he comes to when they cry, that he answers their prayer when they call. He said, if a man loves me, one, if a man keeps my commandment, two, I will come to him. So he makes that distinction. Obeying God is an expression of your love. You cannot love God and cuss out and hate your brother. You cannot love God and you're committing adultery and fornication and debauchery and you're a liar. Some people are just liars, natural born liars in the church, in the church. They'll sit across a table from you and lie to your face and don't even blink. You know how some people, when they lie, they blink, you know, you can tell, like you have some family members when they lie, you can tell. <laughs> some people don't even blink. Obeying God is an expression of your love. In the book of First John, now this is John, but you have First John, which is all the way in almost in the back of the Bible. And in the book of First John, there's three of them: First John, Second John, and Third John. I can't get into that book yet. Like I can't, you know, explain the book. Blah blah blah. Go read uh, about it. But First John five three says this. Listen to what this apostle, this disciple of Jesus, this man of God wrote from the Holy Spirit. He said in verse three, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. You see that? He says, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and watch this and his commandments are not grievous. Oh, glory to God. In other words, the commandments of God, they're not burdensome. They're not grievous. They're not hard to do. They're not hard to do. This is the love of God. This is, listen to what he, the writer is saying. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So he took what Jesus said and now he writes it because he's writing to the church. He's not writing to sinners. The first John, he's writing to the brethren, to the church, to the Christians. And he's telling the Christians and he's reminding the Christians. He said, this is the love of God that you keep his commandments. You cannot say to anybody that you love God and you hate your sister. You hate your brother. You hate this one. You hate that one. You're walking around with unforgiveness. You're committing whoredom. You're drinking and smoking and you're going to club after club after club. You're sitting up in a strip club talking about you love God and you're a pastor. And you, you, you in the church and you praying on the teenage girls. You're an old man, 60 plus 70 years old. And you're praying on the 18 and 19 year old talking about this and that. And you're having relationship and going on. You're a predator. You can't say you love God. He says, this is the love of God that you keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They don't hurt you. Huh? But you see, many people come in the church and they pick and choose what they want to do. Think about that. They pick and choose what they want to do. In the book of James, let me show you because a lot of times people think, oh, you know, this, you, 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 you're so harsh, you're stricken. Listen, if you don't like me, that's fine. I, I'm, I've been over that many years ago because people don't want to hear the truth. They want to do what they want to do and they don't want any boundaries or restrictions. And that's why the world is chaotic. That's why the young people are going about all this stuff but the apostle john wrote now in the book of um i want to go to the book of james 
And because you seem to think that sometimes when us pastors and preachers and evangelists teach, we are being harsh. We're not. He says in, the, in James, I'm going to go to chapter one, okay? And he says, let's see. All right, let me start here. He says, a double-minded man is unstable. That's the first thing. A double-minded man is unstable in all, all of his ways. This is the book of James. So when you come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you're double-minded, one, on Sunday, you are saved, and you're jumping up on the pews and shouting and dancing like a, a hyena. And Monday morning, you're living like a whoremonger. You're sleeping with every sister that, that spread open for you. And you're going around drinking and sitting in the thing. And, and you sisters, you're lying and you're hating and you're carrying on. You're living a double life. You live one way in church Sunday. And when you're at home, you're beating your wife. You're slapping her. You're punching her. You're abusing your kids. You're going in. Some of you are in the church and your uncles and aunts. And you're molesting your own family. You're molesting the children. Double life. You're unstable in all of your ways. Double-minded. Then he says this. <laughs> Let's see. Verse 22. He says, but be ye doers of the word, the word, the word. What word? Jesus said, if you keep my word, keep my commandments, if you love me and you keep my commandments or you keep my word, then my father and I will come to you. James is just pulling on what Jesus said. They are now teaching the church what Jesus taught them. And he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. The problem is in these churches and these mega churches, they go to get motivation, mo motivate, motivated. A lot of these preachers you see on these famous channels, they're motivational speakers. They're not preachers and pastors. They're not shepherds. They're motivational speakers. And you pay them your money. He says, don't be hearers only because when you're a hearer, you deceive yourself. So you have a lot of people, they just hear. Amen. They say amen. Amen. They hear. But they hear and they don't do. You cannot say you're a Christian and all you do is hear the word on Sunday and you don't do the word. Jesus said, if you keep, keep, keep. Ah, I didn't write it. If you keep my word, then I will come to you. When you want answers to your prayers, when you want a blessing, when you want a miracle, you've got to keep the word of God. He said, I'll come to you. He said, for if any man be a hearer of the word and not, and not a doer, he's like a man who looks in, in, in the natural mirror. In other words, you look in the mirror at your face and he says he looked at himself and then when he goes away, he forgets what he looks like. Can you imagine? You look in the mirror at yourself and when you go out in the street, you can't remember what you look like. If somebody walks up to you and shows you a photograph of yourself and says, is this you? You're going to be, no, that's not me. You forgot what you look like. Ain't that something? He says, you have to be a doer of the word. My God, my God, my God. And then I want to read this part. James chapter... Da, 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 da. chapter three he says in many things we offend in other words as a christian sometimes we offend in many things little things many things you know throughout your life he says now he's teaching wisdom and he says but if you offend not in word not with your mouth he said you're a mature man you're a perfect person. They use the word perfect in the Bible, but that word perfect in the Bible really means mature. He said, and if you, if you do not offend with your mouth, with your words, 
and you bridle, then you are a mature person and you're able to keep your tongue. He says this, behold, you put a bit in a horse's mouth to control it and the horse obeys you and the ships, they turn by a little, little, little rudder. But he says, even so the tongue. Now watch this. I'm still talking about Jesus said, keep my word, love me. He says, even so the tongue is a little member. It boasts great things. You see, when you watch the How to Fast series, you see me talk about that. People, when they're doing good and kindness and they want to be seen, they, you know, they go on Instagram. Look at what I'm doing. I'm feeding the hungry. Oh, look over here. And they, they want click and bait and they want followers and they want people to follow them and, and, and subscribe. And so they carry on. I'm doing. Ah. He says, even so, the tongue is a little member. Look at the tongue in comparison to your hand and your foot. Your tongue is a small part of your body. And it says, but your tongue, it boasts great things. You talk too much. And behold, what great matter your tongue kindle. Your tongue can breed hatred. Your tongue can kill. Your tongue can start a war. Your tongue can destroy marriages. Because if you take your tongue and you lie, you can break up someone's marriage. The tongue is a, is a weapon that you got to bridle. It's a dangerous thing. And so James is teaching because we're still on keeping God's commandments. And so he says, you got to watch what you say. You got to watch what comes out of your mouth. Because you think I'm making it up when I'm preaching and I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to live right. Watch what he says. He says, the tongue is a fire. Your tongue is a world of iniquity. So it is. When you find people talking too much and telling lies and all these things, you can cause fraction, friction between people. You can break up a church. You can break up a government. You can break up a system with your tongue by lying in what you say. Mm, 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 mm. He says for the tongue, and I'm going to go down. I'm going to skip. I want you to go read James chapter three. Read it on your own. He says, I just want to get to this point about keeping God's commandment. He says, therewith, he said, the tongue is unruly. And he says, therewith we bless God, even the father. And then we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. So he says in verse nine, chapter three, you bless God with your tongue. Watch this keeping his commandments. You bless God with your tongue. And then two seconds later, you're cursing your brother, your sister with the same tongue. Because remember, unless you got some forked tongue that we don't know about, you use the same tongue. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, I testify. And as soon as you finish testifying, you start gossiping about your sister. You start gossiping about the pastor. You start talking about people's marriages. You start doing all these things with the same tongue. You start cussing people. God is not in that. And God is not pleased. He said, out of the same mouth, proceed blessings and cursing. He said, my brethren, these things are not to be. Then he asked a question. He says, does a fountain send forth at the same time sweet water and bitter water? So he's saying, can you go to a water cooler and drink bitter and, and sweet water at the same time? Can you go to a water cooler and drink salty water and, 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 and fresh water at the same time? No, it's impossible. It's impossible. So you cannot say you love God and you're double-minded and out of your mouth and out of your life, you're living in sin Monday through Saturday and on Sunday, you're a Christian. You can't, God is not a part-time lover. He's not a groupie either. He's holy and he's to be respected. And when you are, Jesus said, and if you love me and keep my commandments, we will come to you. The father and I are one and we will make our abode with you. And he says, then when the comforter is come, the Holy Ghost would come. 
Because when you keep his commandments, then the Holy Ghost will come and he's going to teach you all things. He's going to bring things to your remembrance and he's going to give you things to go read. Sometimes, you know, you'll sit down and he'll give you a word. You, you know when the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you because he'll say something to you. When I was a new believer and I started reading the Bible and stuff and I would, you know, be meditating or in prayer and all of a sudden he'll, the, the Lord will say something. And I'm like, oh, you just, he'll, he'll just say something. And then I'll say, what does that mean? And I find myself going to the Bible and I would go to my concordance. You know what a concordance is? You got to get a good Bible that has a concordance. And I will look up the word and I will look up where was it quoted or he will quote a scripture to me. And I would go and look up the scripture. And when I begin to read it, he begins to speak to me and teach me about me and teach me about what I need to correct or teach me about what he's about to do. He's going to bring those things to your remembrance. But if you ain't got nothing in there, what is he going to bring to your remembrance if you're not studying? So he answers Judas and he says, he says, why don't you go manifest to them? He's not going to manifest to people who don't love him. Why? They don't care about him. They don't want him. You see, in the church, you've got people living in sin. If you are living in sin, you're a sinner. You're a sinner. If you're living in sin, you're a sinner. You're not saved. Then you have the ones who are habitual sinners. You're a backslider. If you're a habitual sinner, you're a backslider sitting in the church. And then you have those who make mistakes. They're erroneous sins. You make sin, you, you know, you commit sin out of ignorance or a moment of weakness or a wrong decision. And people like that, then you repent, you see, then you repent because real Christians, when they make an ignorant decision or out of weakness or mistake out of, um, you know, a moment of weakness or wrong decision or poor judgment, you can repent. But the habitual one, habitual, they intentionally do it. And the one living in sin, they just disregard God altogether. You're not saved. The Bible said when the apostle Paul was teaching, he says, you will have no part in the kingdom of God. So I don't know which heaven you're going to. So don't pick and choose what you obey. Obey his commandments. And if you make a mistake, if you're under the mistake and the error, then you repent. God will forgive you and he will wash away your sin. So if you did use poor judgment and you made a mistake, you, 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 um, a moment of weakness, you made a wrong decision, repent, God will forgive you. If you're living in sin, you have to stop it completely and turn your life over to God. And if you are habitually sinning, you're a backslider, you gotta stop, you gotta give it up and come to God, repent, and he'll take all of you back, every one of us. So the comforter will come. And remember what I said earlier, the comforter is that paracletos or one who comes alongside you. And the comforter is a person, he's an advocate for you. So the comforter is gonna come. And just like I talk about when you have erroneous and mistake when a believer, he will advocate for you because he's going to intercede for you and he's going to let you know, listen, you've just sinned and you have to repent, right? And when you repent, he's going to advocate to the father for you and say, father, listen, she's good. She repented. She didn't mean it. And he's going to help you. He's going to help you. Paracletos, he's an advocate. He's going to fight for you. He's going to help direct you. He's a helper. The Holy Spirit is also known as a helper. He's going to help you in your weak moments. He's going to direct you. He's going to give you strength. But if you're living in sin and if you are an habitual sinner, then what can you do? You've, you've intentionally and purposefully disregarded him. So there's nothing he can do until you come back. When you come back and you repent, yes, then he'll advocate for you. He'll advocate for you. You see, so don't pick and choose what you're going to do. It's either you're in or you're out. You can't be double minded. 
he will teach you all things and the work is not finished this means that the work of christ is not finished when the holy ghost is going to teach you because there's things you have to do we have to carry on the work of jesus we have to go out and tell people about christ the work is not finished remember he says greater works you're going to do not greater in quality but greater in quantity because we have decades and decades and centuries and centuries and we have more people, so we have mass. We have the millions and millions and millions all over the world doing the work of Christ. That's the greater. And then he closes out and he says, and he bequests peace upon them. He says, peace I leave with you, not like the world gives. I give my peace to you. And in that culture, it was customary. And they it was customary that when you go to someone's house or you're leaving someone's house you pronounce peace upon it and you see this in certain cultures where they go shalom you know what i'm talking about they always say shalom which is peace they bless your house with peace it's a cultural thing right and so that was a practice in that day and in certain religion they practice that too but jesus is saying listen he says peace I leave with you now watch what he says he says my peace so he's making a distinction he's making a distinction he said my peace I give to you not as the world give so the peace that he's giving this peace is not like oh peace you know we give the peace sign peace yo peace or whatever right this peace is a piece of power this peace has power this peace has power and this peace will calm your fears this peace will undergird you in the storm this peace will keep you from falling this peace will keep your mind from having a mental breakdown when you should be this peace is powerful so this is not the peace that the world just nonchalantly and arbitrarily just speak into the wind because they're not even speaking it to you some of them don't even mean it they're like yo peace jesus said this is my peace and jesus's peace has power jesus's peace come oh my god it comes with a mighty moving it keeps you calm in troubled times. It keeps your mind. Ooh, glory to God. This peace will keep you in the midst of the storm. It undergirds you. And then he says in the last of, because we're finishing the chapter. He says, as I told you, I'm going away. And I'm going away because he says, if I, when I go away, he says, the prince of this world will come and he has nothing on me and when he talks about the prince of this world he's talking about satan satan is the ruler of this world or the prince that's why jesus he can't manifest himself to the world when judas asked the question how come you don't show yourself to the world because satan is the ruler or the prince of the world so you have the church and you've got the world and satan runs the world satan runs the world why do you think there's so much wickedness and evil going on satan runs the world and jesus says i'm gonna leave because i have no parts of him in other words satan don't have a foothold he does not have a foothold in the kingdom of god satan don't have any foothold of deception or any hook in the kingdom of god he could not stop jesus from going to the cross jesus went to the cross willingly so satan can't stop jesus from doing what he came to do so jesus says i'm out i'm go i'm on my way now because the prince of this world he's getting ready to come but he ain't got no hook he ain't got no power over me and the devil don't have power over you as long as you're not living in sin walking in sin and carrying on the devil has no power over you I like what Jesus said in chapter 8, I think it's 8, 9, 10, 11, back up in the chapters when they, the Pharisees were carrying on and Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning and he was a murderer from the beginning. 
So the if you notice, he says, you are like your father, the devil. So the devil or Satan, he's a ruler of the world. So there's a lot of people whose father is Satan. And that's why the world is the way it is. But you, beloved, you, Satan has no foothold in your life. Satan has no grip on you, not when you are in Christ. So that's why he says, don't you be troubled and don't you be afraid. The devil don't have no power over you. Jesus has all power and he has given power unto you. He has given power unto me and the devil cannot take you down. That's why Isaiah, when he was prophesying, he said, no weapon, no weapon that's formed against against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rise up against me, judgment is already condemned. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you've got Christ on your side. And like the psalmist said, who, the, the apostle said, who can lay a charge? Who can bring a charge before God on your behalf? Who can come to God and accuse you? Huh? It's God who makes things right in your life. Oh, it's so good. My time has been long up, but this is so good. I hope it blessed you. Oh my goodness, this blessed me so. And there's much more. So go back and study it out. There's much, much more. I'm just giving you a little cherry on top here, but you have to go back and study it on your own and, and, and read it and read the whole entire book, the whole entire chapter. The next time we meet again, we'll be talking about chapter 15. Oh, another wonderful chapter. I'm telling you, you're going to love this chapter too. It's such a great, great chapter. The whole book is great. Come back. We're going to get to chapter 15. We're going through the book of John in case you didn't notice we're going through the book of John So come on back, but I hope this message bless you listen to the message again Listen to it over and over get it in your spirit and then go back and read it Listen to the message and listen to it again and then go back and read it and listen to it again and get it in your heart Amen go with God and continue to be a blessing because you are blessed to be a blessing Come back. We're not done yet. And don't forget to join me on the How to Fast series on It's Prayer Time Friday. God bless you.